if you sort of think about entertainment, you know, movies have gone from you know black and white to black and white with sound to color to you know color with sound to digital to big screen, you know, IMAX and the sort of sense of being more and more immersed in the story is, is very important. And you know, with VR, you can really take somebody somewhere else. So we, we've raised about $100 million so far for Jaunt um, from companies like you know, Redpoint, Highland Ventures, um, Google. And, and the reason we were able to do that is that you know, we have a vision of what entertainment will be in the future. <music> VR is, is, is great, you know, it's something I, I really enjoy doing, but it's something you do once a week. You know, it takes time to set up and you know you get to get ready for it um, but AR is something that you could use in your daily life you know you do it on your phone you know you can imagine that it's later on can be built into your glasses so you can do it all the time I think that has a in the long term a bigger opportunity is a bigger opportunity but VR is kind of a lead into AR um, so there's a lot happening and even five years into it we're still discovering new things every day So I moved to Silicon Valley 25 years ago because I was invited by Sun Microsystems to work on a, a project for home automation and it was called, a project called First Person and they were developing a programming language called Oak and like five years later we turned that programming language into a very successful programming language called Java. So I was involved in that process. Now, first of all, you need to decide to do it. A lot of people sort of say, well, you know, as soon as I get money, I'm going to start a company. Well, that's, that's not, that does not the way how it works. I mean, you got to start the company and then pray that you get money, right, and work for it. And then you got to build something. That the beauty of startups is that you create something from nothing. You know, you start with a blank sheet of paper, you write a bunch of code, you sell it for millions of dollars. That's kind of the, 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 the recipe. The biggest challenge always for startups is to find talent. You know, you have to get the right people because having a great idea is easy. I mean, anybody can have a great idea. The, the really hard part is to find the right people because it's easy to change the idea of the product that you're working on, but it's very hard to change the people, right? It's hard to fire people when you're, there's five of you, right? So picking the right people is always the most important thing early on. When you're a small startup, it's relatively easy, right? Because I can give you a huge percentage of the company. I can give you five, ten percent of the company if you want to come work for me. That's very, very attractive to people who have an entrepreneurial spirit because it could be five percent of the next Facebook. You know, you could be a billionaire. It's all about your share in the company, right? Salary is important, but if you look in the long term, the money you're going to make is through you know, the return on investment of your shares, not, not in the salary you make. Well, I mean, I think Dutch entrepreneurs in general have been pretty successful in Silicon Valley. I mean, Dutch people are generally sort of uh, very straightforward to deal with. You know, they're, they're very uh, direct. Um, that is a, sometimes a bit of a problem, but it's usually an advantage. Um, and also they're pretty hardworking and well-educated and they speak the language well. Um, you know, I think that what's harder is, um, you know, you, you, have to, you have to realize you're going to spend a lot of time fundraising. You know, that, that, that's very time consuming. You need to talk to a lot of people and probably half your time you're basically there just begging for money all the time, which is something you need to take into account. The top VCs are interested in the next Facebook. They're not interested in, you know, doubling their money. They want to, you know, they want to, you know, quadruple or, or quintuple or, or their money. Right? They really want to see a big liftoff. 
And as a result, you need to kind of come up, p pose the idea as a big idea that is, um, uh, that has legs, you know, a billion dollar idea, even if it isn't, right? Even if your plans are to slowly scale it up, you still need to show the potential opportunity. Yeah, when you do come here, you need to be prepared and you need to have a great pitch. And I always tell people, you know, you want to have a, a pitch that's like, you know, 15 slides that sort of, you know, talks about the people you have on your team, the product you're going to build, the market you're going to address, and how you're going to be successful, and, and how much money you need. Right? And, and, but it, you have to rehearse that pitch, you know, 50 times before you pitch it to the first VC. You know, rehearse it to your dog, your cat, your wife, your neighbors, you know, and, and make sure people ask questions because you, every time they ask a question, you need to have an answer right away. And it needs to be a pretty good answer, right? So they, they, they realize you've thought about everything. Well, as a company, you can come to the U.S., especially if you raise financing here. There are special visas for entrepreneurs that have raised money here and that employ people here. Um, so if you're interested in that, you should talk to the consulate in San Francisco. Um, but again, it, it is not easy. You know, you're coming from Holland, you know, for a venture capitalist is a bit of a challenge because you've, you come from very far away. And you, sp you speak a very funny language and your contracts are all in a very strange legal language as well. So it's very important that you completely commit to coming here and really sort of restart your, your company here in Silicon Valley so that it's done on American terms. If you want to reach the horizon, you have to aim over the horizon. If you aim at the horizon, you're never going to get there. And that's, that's something that you need, to, you need to realize. You need to aim much further than your actual goal because you're, you know, if, even if you get halfway, you've made a lot of progress.